Praise the Lord once again, everybody. Pastor Kimmy Montgomery here, Senior Pastor of Master's Touch Christian Outreach Center, back for another thankful Thursday Bible study. I pray that you are in great health, good spirits, and that the Lord's blessings are continually upon you. I'm going to open with a word of prayer, and we're going to get right into our lesson for tonight. This is part three of Facing the Giants, the Giant Called Hurt. So, Father, we're just thankful today for your blessings. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, that you are a great God and you were greatly to be praised. Nothing's too big for you, Father God. We're overcomers by the shed blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, and we testify tonight that God be for us. So who can be against us? So we thank you right now, Lord God, for an ear that will hear what your spirit is saying to us, the church. We thank you, Lord God, for revelation and insight as we continue to mature in you, that we, Lord God, might be fit for the master's use. We give you praise for it now in Jesus name. Amen. Well, once again, we are back on Thankful Thursday Bible study and we are going to be um, uh, concluding tonight the giant called hurt. This is part three of a uh, of a series on facing the giants and the first giant we've been dealing with is the giant of hurt and tonight we are going to complete the the um the study on hurt and we'll progress into another giant on next week so let's go ahead and uh, and begin facing the giants the giant called hurt you know we we've taken a thorough look at the giant called hurt and we should be able um by these uh, past two uh, sessions that we've we've already uh, done, we should be able to recognize his appearance in our lives now. And we have to come to understand that relationships will always be the area or the area that he desires to take over. Even though many have been held captive and deceived by this giant, there is no giant that we will ever encounter that God doesn't already have the answer for. Somebody ought to say amen right here now. Many times, you know, when we seek answers or solutions to a problem, the answer can sometimes be so simple that it just seems impossible for that to work. Your mind begins to tell you that, that, that there's got to be more to it when there really isn't. Prime example is our salvation. So simple, yet so many people miss out on it. All a person has to do, according to the word of God, is confess with their mouth and believe in their hearts and they can be saved. A lot of times, uh, or a lot of time we tend to, to veer away from the specific instructions and look for shortcuts to fulfillment. Romans 10 and 9 gives specific instructions. So you can't just confess anything and be saved. It says you must confess the Lord Jesus. You can't just believe anything. You must believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Then you shall be saved. The answer to overcoming the giant of hurt is equally as simple. Last week we ended uh, by talking about that even though David had gathered five smooth stones, it only took one to kill the giant. To kill the giant of hurt, your stone, as we talked about last week, as we ended last week's session, your stone is rejoicing. Rejoice means to be glad. Rejoice means to take delight. Rejoice means to make joyful. Something I've, I've I never really paid much attention to until now is how at sometimes you can be hurting even to the point of crying. Anybody, I'm, I'm sure some of you out there have been hurt to the point that you are in tears, but you're going to be hurting even to the point of crying. And and somebody will come along and they'll do something or they'll say something funny and it'll cause you to start laughing right in the middle of crying. <laughs> Anybody been there besides me? What happened is that person interjected some joy into an otherwise hurtful situation. 
and caused a spirit of rejoicing to come forth. And it also shows that hurt, now listen to this, hurt doesn't have a stronger hold on us as we think. Grab your Bibles, hope you already got them out anyway, but grab your Bibles, get your pens and pads ready, and let's begin to write down some scriptures as we go into the Word of God. We're going to go uh, to 1 Peter chapter 4, and we're going to be looking at verses 12 through 13. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 13. And it reads this way, it says, Beloved, talking to us, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Verse 13 says, But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. The stone for the giant of hurt is called rejoice. See, God doesn't want us crying and complaining during our trials. But most of the time, that, that's, that's what we wind up doing. Spending precious time dwelling in a land that we have no place in. He wants us rejoicing. But to rejoice, we will need to remind ourselves of who he is and what he is capable of. I'm sure all of us have experienced hurt more than once in our lives. But if you think about it, you aren't still dealing with all that past hurt. Amen. Somewhere down the line, we got over some of it. And moved on. I thank God I moved on from my past hurts. Or I never would have met my wife and been married to her for 42 glorious years. Hallelujah. Why? Because during, during time, things were presented to us or we participated in things that caused us to rejoice. Psalms 30 and 5, we'll look at the second portion of that scripture. Psalms 30 and 5, it says this, you, you know the scripture, you hear it all the time. Weeping may endure for a night, but what's going to come in the morning? Joy cometh in the morning. Choosing to rejoice will bring joy to your situation. And once joy enters the picture, you'll find yourself stronger. Go over to Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah. Chapter 8, verse 10, and we're going to look at uh, the second portion of that scripture. And we know this scripture very well. It says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Rejoice is a word that requires action for it to work. It's something that nobody can do for you. Even though someone can help you get there, the act of rejoicing is strictly personal. And rejoicing must be directed from, from the right direction to truly overcome that giant of hurt. See, you, sh you sure can't rejoice about what hurt you. There's nothing to rejoice about in, in what actually hurt you, what caused this, this giant to show up in your life. So there has got to be an avenue in which you can tap into when the giant of hurt shows up, there's got to be an avenue that you can tap into rejoicing that comes outside of what it is or what it was you were dealing with. So that there's, that there's an avenue that comes outside of what you're dealing with or outside of what you were dealing with. So there's got to be an avenue to get us to that place of rejoicing. Because like I just said, you, 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 you don't rejoice in the hurt. It hurts. It's nothing to rejoice about in that. It hurts. So in order to, to slay the giant, and as I said, the, the stone that's going to slay him is rejoicing. There's got to be an avenue for us to tap into that's going to bring that rejoicing into our lives, no matter what the situation presented to us. So I want to establish what I just said 
through the word of God. So let, let's lay some groundwork here through the word of God concerning what I just said. In Psalms 9 and 2, I'm going to be reading this from the New International Version. Psalms 9 and 2, the first portion of that scripture reads, I will be glad. I will be glad. You have to tell yourself that. I will be glad and rejoice in you. Psalm 31 and 7, still reading from the New International Version. Slow up just a little bit because, I, you know, if you're turning to the, to the pages. Psalm 31 and 7. It says, I will, once again, I will be glad and rejoice in your love. For you saw my affliction and you knew the anguish of my soul. Man, I tell you, when you're dealing with hurt, uh, sometimes it seems like nobody can understand where you are. No, no, nobody understands it. N nobody knows. I, I, I hate to say this, but I'm going to have to say it. Nobody knows the troubles I have. But there is somebody that knows. And it's Jesus. And it says, I will be glad and rejoice in your love for you saw my affliction and you knew the anguish of my soul. And we're still in the book of Psalm. Let's go to Psalm 63 and 7. <laughs> Uh, excuse me. Psalm 63 and 7. And it says, because thou has been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. Now, let's let's kind of recap what we just read. Here are the avenues we talked about. We got to be able to tap into certain avenue to get to that place of rejoicing. So here are the avenues that brings us to rejoicing. Number one, we read in the first scripture, number one. He says, rejoice in you. Who is you? In God. Not in your hurt, but rejoice in you. It says, I will be glad at rejoicing you. The second thing was the second scripture we read. It says, I will be glad and rejoice in your love. The first one was rejoice in you. The second one is rejoice in your love. Whose love? God's love. God's love. And the third one is rejoice because we are in the shadow of his wings. In other words, he covers us. He, he, he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. So he's there and he knows our affliction or he's seen our affliction and he knows the anguish of our souls and he's there to bring rejoicing to us. See, whenever persecution comes your way, even though it may be hard for some to believe, it just sets you up for blessing. That's why I said, even though it's hard for some to believe, because it's kind of hard to believe that persecution is going to bring about a blessing. But I'm telling you, when persecution comes your way, even though it may be hard for you to believe it, it's just setting you up for your blessing. See, David came out of that battle with the Goliath, a blessed man. Because he faced the giant and he not only faced the giant, he killed him. But before he went into the battle, he asked this question. So let's go over to 1 Samuel 17, 26 and see what David was talking about. 1 Samuel 17, 26, verse 26, and it says, And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Now let's go to 1 Samuel 17, 25. 1 Samuel 17, 25. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up? And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, give him his daughter 
and make his father's house free in Israel. Meaning you ain't got to pay no more taxes. Hallelujah. Now let's look at what Jesus saying. Let's bring this to the the, uh, the New Testament age. Now let's see what Jesus is saying. We're going to look at Luke chapter 22. Uh, Luke 22 and uh, Luke chapter 6 verse 22 and verse 23. Reading from the New International Version still. Jesus says, blessed are you. When people hate you. Yeah. Jesus says, blessed are you when people hate you. When they exclude you. And insult you. And reject your name as evil. Because of the son of man. Verse 23. He says, rejoice in that day. And leap for joy. Because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. Now, to get to the full meaning of what Jesus is saying, you must understand what blessed means. It's not just some weak religious sentiment. You know, we'll say things like bless you, bless you. Somebody sneeze, we say bless you. It, it, it's not just some weak religious sentiment that we have. It means, blessed means, you're empowered by Almighty God himself to prosper and to succeed. It means you've been empowered or you're powered by the Holy Spirit to be exceeding happy with life and joy despite any outside circumstances. So when this giant of hurt comes in and threatens his attack without even realizing it, he's actually given you the opportunity to receive greater measures of power and success from the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Goliath never realized that by challenging David, he allowed the gate of blessing to be open for him. See, in the natural, looking at it from a natural perspective, in the natural, David didn't have a chance against Goliath. But being powered by the spirit of God, he conquered that giant. Remember, as he approached the giant in 1 Samuel 17, 45, this is what he said when he approached the giant. He said, thou comest to me with the sword and a spear and with the shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. So who was he coming to the giant in the name of? The Lord of hosts, God. He wasn't coming in his own power. He knew God would give him the power because God had already proved it to him when he slayed the bear and then when he slayed the lion, God had already proved to him that he would give him power. So this was no different to David. So he said, yeah, you coming at me with the sword, you coming at me with that spear and with that shield, but I'm coming to you, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, if God be for you. Hurt, I'm coming to you in the name of of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. Hurt your head coming off because I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. See, because in your natural, you're no match against hurt. That's why it, why it, 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 it keeps tormenting a lot of us. That's why it hangs around because in our natural, trying to deal with this thing in a natural perspective, we, we are no match for it. Hurt causes a, it causes a heaviness. And unchecked, it can become unbearable. People have taken their lives out of hurt. People have given up on life altogether out of hurt. So it causes a heaviness and, and it can become unbearable. But when you understand the power behind rejoicing in spite of, you can easily dethrone that heavy load. 
As you cast that care on Jesus, Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, go ahead and turn there. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3 can then come to life for us. So you should be there, Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. Verse 1 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim, proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called, he's talking about us, y'all. He's talking about us. He's telling us what, what, what God sent him to do. Because God anointed him to preach good tidings unto the meek. God anointed him to bind up that broken heart. God anointed him to proclaim liberty to those that have been held captive to this giant of hurt. To open up the prison that has encapsulated us because we were bound to that hurt. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. And then, as we were reading in verse 3, to appoint unto them. See, you have an appointed time that this giant must go. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, then to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Remember I said how hurt causes a heaviness? the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called tree of righteousness or trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. See, David understood even after his Goliath days, <clears throat> even after he'd already killed Goliath, and this was further down the road now, he understood what rejoicing was all about. The scripture said, he danced before the Lord with all of his might, leaping and dancing. See, man, you got to get out yourself sometimes and get into God. Leaping and dancing before the Lord to the point, get this, his own wife despised him. Read your Bible. Because he decided no matter what was coming at him, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. So he rejoiced with all his might, leaping and dancing before God <clears throat> to the point his wife despised him. Probably one of them type of persons say, it don't take all that. <laughs> yes, it does. If you go kill this giant. If we are to defeat this giant, we have got to operate from the spirit of David. As David did in Jehovah's sight, I will dance with all my might before the king of kings. It did not matter what they said about him. When it came to rejoicing in the Lord God, he was totally, get this word, un inhibited his wife despised him he didn't care because he was going to re rejoice before the Lord rejoice means to be glad see you can't be sad and be glad rejoice means to, to take delight Psalms 37 and 4 says delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. See, when you're in that rejoicing mode, God will give you the desires of your heart and your desire is to be free from that hurt. Is that not true? 
Your desire is to be free from that hurt. So it says, delight thyself also in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart and you'll be set free. The giant head will be cut off. You'll be free from that giant. If you desire to be free from this giant of hurt, begin to rejoice in the Lord and he will make your desire come to pass. See, rejoice is an all out action packed effort that rids you of all the weights and all the cares. It releases you into peace. It releases you into happiness as well as the joy of the Lord now becomes your strength. Before you didn't know what you was going to do. Before you didn't even know if you could make it through. Like I said before, people have taken their lives because of this giant. But rejoicing in God releases you, sets you free into peace and happiness and as well as the joy of the Lord now becoming your strength. Rejoice means to make joyful. Psalms 98 and 4 says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth, make a loud noise, get loud and rejoice and sing praise. If you haven't realized by now, rejoicing means you must do something. And that something is not wallowing in self-pity. That something is not staying in that place that's causing you so much detriment, that's causing you so much, much, much anguish and, and pain. You must do something. When you rejoice, you load your sling and you launch it directly at your giant. And he has to come down. You want to be victorious over the Jane of hurt? Rejoicing can take you to that place. So be glad. Be overjoyed. Celebrate. Delight. Enjoy. Exult. Feel happy. Jump for joy. Make merry. Triumph in the Lord. Choose whichever one of these you need to do to get past the hurt now that you know you can. All it takes is rejoicing, saints. Rejoice in the Lord. Make a joyful noise into the Lord. Rejoice means to make joyful. Rejoice means you have to do something as well. So, I hope that is my hope and that is my prayer that we have seen some things in these three sessions that have caused us to not only recognize, but to load up and to deal with and to get past that giant of hurt. Your key all along has been your rejoicing. So when you begin to rejoice in the Lord, begin to allow the Lord to just just minister to you. Begin to just give him the glory and the honor. Remember the avenues that he's opened up for you. He says rejoice in you. Rejoice in him. Rejoice in him. Rejoice in his love. Oh, how he loves you. Some loved one more than likely has caused this, this giant of hurt to enter into your life. But you rejoice in his love. Because what greater love than this that a man will lay down his life for his friends? What greater love is this that God so loved the world that he gave his only son to die for you? And as he came on this earth and as he, as he, he, he lived out on this earth, the design and the plan that God had for him, those designs and those plans have become promises unto us now. We read that he 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 knows your anguish. He, he, he sees it. He knows about it. 
And not only does he see it and know about it, he can do something about it. So he opens up an avenue for you to 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 redirect your focus, not focused anymore on that. But to take up your weapon, your sling, your smooth stone and to not just hold it, but to fire it and slay that giant. And how do you do that? Rejoice in him, rejoice in his love and rejoice because you're under the shadow of his wings. Well, saints, that's going to conclude our, our teaching on the giant of hurt. Next week, we're going to begin to deal with another giant. And that giant is called the giant of anger. And oh boy, he's a toughie too. But like I said, God is able to do exceeding abundant of other things we can think or ask. So now that we, we have understood and now that we have slain the giant of hurt, because we're rejoicing, hallelujah, we're rejoicing in the Lord. And as we rejoice, as we rejoice, he has no other option but to fall because rejoicing is the stone that kills him. So next week we'll begin to deal with the, the giant of anger. So thank God for you tuning in tonight. Once again, this is Pastor Kimmy Montgomery. I am the senior pastor of Master Church Christian Outreach Center and we're located at 3702 North Franklin Avenue here in Flint, Michigan. Right now, uh, our current service times are Sundays. We're, we're doing Sunday services. Uh, we begin at 11 o'clock. We have a uh, uh, children's Bible study, youth Bible study. I'm sorry, children's uh, Sunday school, youth Sunday school, as well as adult Sunday school. Uh, we have praise and worship. We have worship service. We just come and we have a good time before the Lord. We hear the word of the Lord and we are empowered by it as we leave that place. So we'd love to invite you to come out and be a part of what God is doing at 3702 North Franklin Avenue. Come on in. We'd love to have you be our honored guest. And maybe you don't have a church home. You're looking for a place. Come on. This can be the place that you can call home because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts at this place. And you are welcome to come just as you are and allow God to just share his love with you in that place. Amen. So thank you once again for tuning in. Hope to see you here on next Thursday as we go into the next session called the giant of anger. God bless you. But before I end this broadcast, I want to get one more prayer out there. There may be somebody that's watching this broadcast because I don't want to take anything for granted. You could be watching this broadcast and you may not even know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. And that's something that's a must. We must know Jesus because no man comes to the Father except through him. So we must know Jesus. So there may be somebody out there that has, has viewed this program, that are viewing this program, that, that you have not received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Or there may be somebody out there that had received him, but for whatever the reason is, uh, maybe the giant of hurt caused you to do it. I don't know. You walked away from him. You pulled away from him. But now he's here with open arms saying, I'm ready to receive you. He said, if any man comes to me and no wise will I cast him out. So that means it doesn't matter, man, woman, boy, or girl. If you want to come to Jesus, you can so we got a simple prayer to pray for you. We talked about this early in the session that sometimes things seem so simple. It looks like they surely can't work, but this works. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that means if you say, I'm calling on you now, Jesus. And believe in your heart that, that God raised him from the dead, that Jesus is not in a grave somewhere. He's alive. He's seated at the right hand of God the Father, and he's praying for you right now. So if we confess with our mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says we can be saved. So if you'll say this simple prayer with me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you came to save me. I receive you right now. I confess my sins to you. I ask that you come into my heart, that you be my Lord, that you be my Savior, and I'll serve you from this day forth. In Jesus name. 
Well, guess what? You just got born again, and I want to rejoice with you even more so. The angels in heaven are rejoicing right now if you pray that prayer with us. If you would like to, you can give me a call anytime. Uh, my number is area code 810-814-3260, or you can drop me an email, Pastor Kimmy Montgomery, all together, lowercase letters, Pastor Kimmy Montgomery. You can see my name uh, behind me here on the on the uh on the banner, Pastor Kimmy Montgomery, Pastor Kimmy Montgomery at gmail.com. Drop me an email. Let me respond back to you. We'd love to help you in your new walk with Christ and get you acclimated more so in the things of God. Well, hope to see you here next week. Uh, love to have you come be a part of our service on Sunday. Hope to see you soon. God bless you and you have a glorious and awesome day.